Art to me means freedom. Art is something I run away to. It's my escape. It is a form that I use to express myself the most. It's basically me just not being conformed to anything, not being tied up to anything. So yes, art means freedom to me. My name is Ayofe. I'm a visual artist and a photographer. I major mostly in scribble arts. I am the founder of the movement Jagaism and Charity with Arts NGO. to an art school I don't think I would have acquired that knowledge of scribble art because scribble art actually finds you you don't you can't you can't learn to you can't learn to scribble it's it comes to you it comes to you naturally I call my style jagaism and it's it was coined from the word jaga jaga it's a slang in Nigeria here jaga jaga is um, using um lines like lines with no direction exactly just scribbling exact um, scribbling yeah so um I came about that name when I realized I came about that name from the hate I get because I go out to draw, I go out to draw and um, people be like, "What's this girl doing? What's this nonsense she's doing? She's just, she just moving, she just she just making lines without direction." And then they end up seeing the beauty in it when I'm done, and then they be like, ah, "Wow, she just drew art from Jaga Jaga." So I owned up to that name. I owned owned up to that Jaga Jaga artist, yeah. And then I use it to start a movement. It's called Jagaism. Yeah, that is that is why I used to. That is why I used to um, define my art. It's Jagaism. I wasn't born with a pencil in art. I okay, yeah. I've been doing art since, but since I've known myself, say um, since. Five years old, I've been doing art, like I've been just creating um, caricatures and all of that, but I never really knew much about art. I was just drawing, I was just imitating things from my textbooks and all of that. So uh, my interest in art developed over time, it developed when I was in secondary school, SS1 precisely. I had so much interest in art and I did a lot of research. I, I just wanted, I knew that I wanted to be an artist when I was in SS1. That's about, that's about 10 years ago. When I wasn't getting the attention of my parents, I I felt like giving up. I felt like just dropping it, cause it's <laughs> it seemed like they were my closest relation, right? Or they are my closest relation, and I always wanted to like show them the stuff I was doing, but I wasn't really getting so much attention because they didn't see it to be a serious career for me. They just thought it was something that should have been should pass as as a hobby. So yeah, that period I didn't really I felt like just dropping it and then times in school studying microbiology like I had to like share time between class works and all of those things so balancing my time giving art some time and then giving microbiology some time was just really difficult for me I was going to drop out like I was going to just drop it but nah <laughs> it's 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 like I said it's my freedom it's 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 the only it's the only it's, it's the only way I get to express myself like easily It wasn't so easy creating a balance between arts and uh, microbiology, which I studied in school. It wasn't easy because I had to sacrifice some classes. I ditched a lot of classes just so I could attend to my personal um, my personal call. <laughs> yeah. So uh, at some point, when my friends had to like read for exams, say they read they read. Um, they read just once. I have to read twice, double the time my friends are reading, just to make up for the lost classes. Yeah. This was on um, the attention piece. I was, I was trying to communicate with people. I was trying to communicate to my parents, and um, I made this piece for a competition on Instagram. I had, um, I drew, I drew myself, or I appropriated myself in a, in a kid, in a kid. And then um, I had two adults, two elderly people there, like a man and a woman, and then the child. 
crying. Whenever a child cries, child cries for attention. He seeks attention from his parents. So this was just me trying to communicate to my parents that you guys, I need you. I need, I need you. I need you to look at what I'm doing. Just calm down. Understand me. Understand that this is what I want to do. Yeah, and somehow they they saw it. Although they didn't they didn't tell me what they saw, but they understood what I was saying. And this artwork actually changed a lot of things in my house. I would like to meet Bob Nosa Wagwe. I would like to meet Pedro Alatishi. Our works are so awesome. I would also like to meet um, Uchi Ozoka. And then if I could bring Basquiat back to life, I would bring him back. I would like to meet that man. He's amazing. <laughs> Music and dance is very important because before I started taking art seriously, I was doing dance and then I dropped it. Yeah, because uh, dance to me is like scribble. When I dance, I see lines in my head. Whenever I move, I see lines in my head, like different lines for me together to mean something. So that is just me moving around and yeah. So like I do, I dance, I dance for fun. I dance to express myself too. And then I listen to music to express myself too because there are some kind of songs I relate to. So I listen to music to express myself. I also listen to music for inspiration. For now, it's, it's, it's just Charity with Art. I, Charity with Art is a platform I use to um, pass on knowledge, the knowledge that I have. Because I feel like there are people out there who, who have actually, or who are currently going through the, the same phase, the same, the, the same things I went through. Um, having, the, having the talent, but not knowing how to go about it, not knowing who to meet, not knowing what to do, not getting the attention. So, And then there are some who, there are some who have this talent and they don't know how to make money off it. So yeah, um, Charity with Art is a platform that helps to teach people, that helps to grow artists, younger artists, the young at art. Yeah, we help, we, we, we use this platform to grow the young at art. We, we, we expose them to um, people interested in art. We have exhibitions, we teach them to draw first and then we make series of paintings and then we exhibit them at um, on the D-Day. We invite people over to see them, buy them. And then when they buy them, the money gotten from this people is what they used to um, fend for themselves. Is what they used to fend for themselves. At least that alone to get them materials because one of the challenges of an artist is also materials. Yeah, So they use these things, they use the money to get materials and we check back on them, we check back on them to see the progress. Yeah. So it's, it was better based on my own experience, my own growing experience because I had to do a lot of hustling side jobs to get what I had when I started doing art seriously. Before I go through um, go through my personal questions, I'd like to ask when um, Signature um, Gallery was founded, like a little bit about the gallery. I don't know if you mind. It was founded in 1992 in Lagos here. Um, okay, so please, um, I'd like to know what advice you have for artists who um, who have the ten or artists who feel left out, artists who who at some point in their life they they just want to give up, they just have the feeling to give up because nothing seems to be going right, nothing seems to be going as planned for them. What advice do you have for them, sir? The thing is, you see, this thing about things going right and not going right, it's not just with artists, visual artists. You know, it's a, it's a typical thing all over the world, you know, every other career. Some are lucky, they make it, some are not. Art is one of them. You see, there are many ways to approach this thing, okay? It depends on what exactly it is. But I personally feel, if you're a good artist, the work will always speak for itself. Scribble, this is Scribble, the way it's put together. Okay, it's called Free, all right? And then he arranged it, and then I mounted it and framed it, and we bought it. And he also did the one above, okay? Yes, art like that is hard to sell here. Only very, very few will understand. That is the unfortunate aspect of it. We, we still have a long way to go. Yeah, I've always wondered how, like, people just come over, they see works, and then... Well, I don't blame them for what they see and, and stuff, but they just see some works and they start saying, they start leaving eight comments. They don't understand it sometimes. I just take it that they don't understand it. So, like, it just it just sometimes weighs, it weighs me down. Exactly. Yeah, it, it, I told you, it's always in Nigeria, it's playing it safe. 
You see, on the other, in French Africa, okay, they're more adventurous. They might go for the things they don't understand. But here is only what they understand. Try and push something abstract on this. This gallery is the only one that believes and keeps on forcing it and rubbing it on their faces. Do you, you get me? But with time, that's all there is to it. It's a matter of time. But here, back to the same expression I said, they like to play it safe. It's what they understand. That's what they can go for, which is sad. Um, I just remember now, uh, d is it advisable for someone who didn't study art, someone who doesn't have that art background to um, go to school to learn art? Like, do you believe in the idea of going to get an art education or you believe in um, those who actually, those who it comes to like the self-taught artists basically? I don't know if you um, understand my question. No, 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 no. I, uh, you're free to do whatever you want with your life. You know, nobody should dictate to you what to study or not to study, what's your passion, what's your obsession. You understand? If if it's at some stage in your life you decide everybody has a form of, you know, an artistic flair about them somewhere. You know, some people are talented, they may not know it, but they, they put in their best into it. Art is a gift. It's it's a weapon. You're giving it to you're giving it to, to use the impact, just to express. So I feel like when you have this, when you realize you have this gift, when you realize you have this weapon, you should understand it first, understand yourself first. Because if you don't know yourself, then there's it's going to be really hard for you to it's going to be really hard for you to use the gift you have. Yeah. So you need to know yourself, and then you need to you need to you need to learn. You need to understand the gift that you have, and then. Once you, once you know all of these things, you use it to tackle a lot of things. You need to, you can either use it to impact knowledge um, into people that is through teaching, or you use it to, um, you use it for activism. It all depends on what you actually want to use it for. But first thing and most important thing is that art is an important weapon. If you have these gifts, use it wisely, use it wisely. There are people listening, there are people watching. You might not get the attention quickly. It's, it's, it won't just come like that, but just don't stop. Just don't stop. Keep practicing. Keep doing what you love doing. Somehow, somehow, the attention comes afterwards.